in this video where Console allows users to tackle some of the toughest challenges when it comes to deploying new applications or making modifications to an existing application flows. It helps customers to address the technical complexity of managing production services by providing a way to discover, automate, secure, and connect applications and networking configurations across a distributed infrastructure and clouds. What the team have created as part of Console is network infrastructure automation, which enables the dynamic updates to network infrastructure devices triggered by service changes. Console Terraform Sync utilizes Console as a data source and Terraform as the underlying automation tool to execute one or more automation tasks that update network infrastructure devices such as Checkpoint. As you follow the numbers on this slide, what is happening here is as soon as an application is updated in Console, it triggers a task in Console Terraform Sync to initiate the Checkpoint Terraform module to make the changes on our management station. What this allows the customers to do is to update IP addresses of the application without having to do a policy install. This is very helpful because regardless of where the application is hosted, whether it's on-prem, public, or hybrid cloud, Console can help cus customers consolidate all the application details. Under the hood, we're using dynamic objects. On the left, we have our console service, which is the dynamic object name. Then we have each service node as a tag value that represent also the IP addresses of each node. On the right-hand side, we have an output from our security gateway that represents the service and service node IP addresses. Once the object is created, we can put them in our security policy. No matter how many times each node IP addresses changes, you don't have to go through the change management approval process to install a policy as the IP address is updated automatically. This is a diagram of our lab environment. Starting from left to right, we have our console server with three services running. And each service, we have two nodes behind it. Each node could be a physical server, a virtual machine, or a container. In the middle, we have a server with uh, Terraform, uh, binary install, and also with our NIA module install. And then to the right, we have our uh, checkpoint infrastructure, which contains our management station and two security gateways for testing. I want to start off by showing you guys what the console user interface looks like. So this is our console server. And in our server, we already have our web, our app, and database services configured. And inside each service, we have our nodes. And again, the nodes could be a physical, physical uh, server, it could be a VM, or it could be a container. Later on, I'm gonna add an additional node to the web and app services to show you end-to-end -end what the integration looks like. All right, so let's start configuring our lab. We're gonna start with the checkpoint management station, and then we move on to the server in the middle where we have Terraform and the NIA module. So what do we need to do on the checkpoint side? First, we need to create an API user. This user is going to be for Terraform and the NIA module. And then we're going to clone the repo, which contains all of our scripts and binaries required for the integration to work. And lastly, we're going to update our security policy. We're going to go ahead and create the API user, and we're going to do it from the smart console. And of course, you can do this from command line as well. Okay, so create a user under Manage and Settings. Go to Permissions and Administrators. Click on the New button. Give it a username. Set the password. Uncheck the checkbox so that we keep using this uh, password that we set. And in terms of permissions, uh, give it read, write, all access because we will be creating and deleting dynamic objects with this user. That's okay. Publish, and we have a new user. The Checkpoint Dynamic Object Module for NIA is hosted on the Terraform registry. And to access the source code for this integration, um, you can click on this link here, which take you to our GitHub page. 
To finish our configuration, we need to download the integration files. So navigate to the GitHub page and under code, um, download to your desktop. So I already did that ahead of time. And if you scroll down a little bit to the installation steps, um, we already created our API user. So we're gonna skip this section. Next is uh, we're gonna need to um, finish the configuration on a management station by, uh, we're gonna need SSH access to it. So I already have the files download, and the first thing we need to do is to transfer these two files to our management station. So on my desktop here, um, I already have the uh, the files, the integration files downloaded. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the, the files over to our management station. Okay, so it's under um, Terraform Checkpoint, Dynamic Object, and our A module under Scripts. In here, we have two uh, shell scripts. We're gonna transfer them over to our management station. Okay, so it's done. So once it's transferred, then uh, we're gonna SSH to the management station. We'll do that here. Management. Okay, so now we're on our management station and it's under home admin and we have our scripts here. Um, so the first thing you do is to create the console directories. We'll do that and next is we're going to move the scripts over to the console directory. So let's change to the working directory. All right, so the files are here. Um, next is to make sure that the credentials are set in our uh, management script here. So, or, so in your case, uh, the username and password will be different. So you can have the VI to file and to change the username and password. Um, in my case, I created a console user using the same password. And then the next step is to change, step number two is to change the permission of the files. Make sure that we can execute the files. And then we're gonna run the, um, the script for the first time. And what this will do is it'll create all the necessary integration uh, files. Next, we're gonna create a local console user. And this user is for uh, kicking off the cron job. And what the cron job is doing in the background is to look for any new um, dynamic objects created. And once it detects, if it detects the, a new dynamic object that's created, we're gonna push it out to all the gateways. And that's what the user is for. All right, so what I've done here is um, I copy and paste these commands in there. And what this is doing is that it first created it, the local console user. Second, it add a cron job that runs every two minutes. And once the cron job's added in there, then the, this is this command here is to validate and show you that um, there is a, a cron job running every two minutes here. And that's what that's um, step number two is doing. And in step number three, we're gonna modify the gateways file to include any uh, gateways that you'd like to participate in this integration. Um, and to get the gateway IP addresses, um, you can log into the management station and to get those IP addresses. Um, and then since I already know the gateway IP address, I'm just gonna type it in here. So they are 10.10.253 and 10.52, okay? So once I have the gateways file populated, um, I'm gonna go ahead and run the um, console management script again. And what this will do is I'll go out and log into the security gateways and initialize the gateway. And how do you know once the gateway has been initialized? Um, you can see that We've modified a file, the gateways file with that in it. That means that the gateway has been initialized. And you can also log into the security gateway itself. So here, um, and you can look at the, um, you can also create a console directory here. Okay, so this is all created by the script. You don't have to log in here and do this manually. All right, so that's done. Um, the next step is to configure the security policy. Um, we're gonna 
reserve this to the last step because um, we first need the console Terraform sync to be in place to create the dynamic objects before we can actually configure security policy. So we're going to circle back to this last. Our next step is to configure the NIA module. And the first thing you need to do is to download the console Terraform sync binary. And you follow this link here to go to a binary and download it, um, then download your specific architecture. And in my case, um, I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to download the, uh, I've already downloaded the, um, the Darwin version. Okay, so now I have the console Terraform sync download, um, and it's actually in my um, in my integration files directory. So I'm in the working directory here, and as you can see, I already have the console Terraform sync binary downloaded, and I have all my um, all the integration files here. So the step number two is to modify the sample HCL, and I'll go ahead and vi the sample HCL, and you can name this to anything you want. Um, you just call you just call this configuration file when you um, launch the um, the binary. So I'm going to keep it a sample. Um, the first thing it asks is to update the console server's IP address. So our console server is this IP here. Go ahead and update this here. Okay. Okay, so we have a console server address and uh, runs over port 8500. Next um, is to update the task information. So let's scroll down a little bit here on the right hand side. We have our task sample. We're gonna I'm gonna keep it a sample, um, and then under services, I'm gonna go ahead and update the services that I would like to monitor. Um, and you don't have to monitor all the services, but in my example, in our example, we're using all these um, services. So I'm going to delete all these services that we're not monitoring. Okay. All right. So we're monitoring the web, the app, and database service. And I get that from here. So remember previously when we when we um, gone through the uh, console server walkthrough is that we have a web, app, and database, and we're going to monitor the three services. And what this is, um, what this is doing. Um, what this uh, configuration is telling the task to do is that, hey, um, anytime there's an update to any of these services, for example, if a node's uh, add to the service or um, a node is removed from the service, um, the task will kick off a, a job, um, a task to checkpoint module to add and remove those uh, nodes from the uh, services. All right, next, we're going to go ahead and um, configure the uh, management station uh, settings here. So scroll down in the configuration file. All right, so I'm gonna change it to my management station's um, IP address. The user is the, con the user is the console user we created or the API user we created previously. And this is the password and that's the, um, the context and the timeout here. Okay, so we're going to save the file. So now that we um, save the file, just make sure and double check. Yep, looks good. Um, and uh, next, we're going to go ahead and, um, and configure the publish.sh. Now, before I do that, I just want to highlight the fact that um, in this case, I'm using a username and password. And Checkpoint also supports an API key as well. So um, you can always uh, create this uh, API user with an API key. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and modify the, um, the publish.sh. Okay, and, and what this um, publish.sh is doing is to help Checkpoint to publish the changes um, to our management station. So again, I'm going to go ahead and put our management server's IP address in here. Okay, okay, so that's in, and we're also going to Put this in here. When the module is running, it's about two directories deep. That's why I'm putting the relative path here. So, okay, so that's done. All right, so we have our publish.sh completed. And next, we're going to change the binary permission and we're going to launch the NIA module. Looks 
So it's creating the object. And it published the changes. All right, so now that's done. And of course, you can always run this um, binary in the background as opposed to running it in, uh, directly in the um, command line here. All right, so now that um, the NIA module is running, and what I want to show you next is uh, show you the what the objects looks like. So I'll go back to the security gateway. The uh, sorry, going back to the our smart console, show you what the what it looks like. We are now back at our smart console, and the first thing I want to show you here is the dynamic objects that the NIA module created. So as you can see, we have um, web, DB, and app, and I've already put them in our security policy for us, right? So I need to web web to app and app to db. And each one of these um, dynamic objects is uh, representing the service. So in this case, web is representing the web service theme console. And the tag value here is representing each node. So we have web2 and web1 um, with the respective IP addresses here. The last thing I'm going to show you is an end-to-end -end interaction from the console server all the way to our security gateway. So on the left here, you see that um, our web and app services each has two nodes behind it, and they are represented here uh, on the security gateway. You see that the app and web each has uh, two nodes representing the IP addresses of each nodes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add um, two more nodes to each one of the services. Sorry, uh, I'm going to add a node to each one of the service. So hold on, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I just started two more containers, and if I just go refresh this page here, you see that um, the nodes have uh, are alive here now in the app and web. Each one has um, three nodes now. So now we're going to wait on the security gateway for it to update here. OK, so now that you see um, there are three IP addresses for web, and we can verify that by um, looking at here. We have dot two, dot seven, and dot five. 275. And then for the um, app servers, we have uh, 5, 6, and 9. We have, uh, sorry, we have uh, 8, 6, and 9. 8, 6, and 9. Okay, so, so what I just showed you is an end to end interaction from a console server all the way to the security gateway. I've added a, a node to the web and app service, and the node IP addresses showed up in the security gateway. Uh, within two minutes. And with that, thank you for your time. This concludes our video. Thank you so much. Bye.